Merry Christmas. I am glad that I can share something with you of Christmas this evening. I can share with you this. This moment when I have lit all of the candles, this is the moment for me when Christmas begins. The moment when I have put the candles out and prepared the sanctuary and turned off everything electronic, and it is time to pray and, and to sing and to share some good news. I, I wish that we could be joined together to do this in person, but uh, I do, I am glad I can share this. Let's begin this moment with a word of prayer then. Heavenly Father, as we gather to celebrate the birth of your Son, let all else fade away in the beauty of this moment. May this beauty sustain us in the midst of the dark. Amen. Now this is a, evening is not complete unless there is some of the music that we proclaim, the music that brings our faith to life. And so I invite you to uh, join with me as we share. Uh, this is something been prepared for us, for churches around the world, uh, to ce help celebrate this this Christmas evening.
The Gospel for this evening comes to us from the first chapter of the Gospel of John. And we read that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, and through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all humanity. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling amongst us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. As some of you might know, when I moved to town here in Shalbina, I drove in driving a rather hard to miss vehicle, a bright green Honda element, a box of a vehicle uh, that was, is impossible to get lost in the parking lot. And it, until a couple months ago, uh, that's what I drove until my dad offered as a trade. Uh, he had moved into the suburbs of Chicago and he had a big white truck and I had a little green box. And so a white truck is very useful around here and a little box is a lot, makes a lot more sense in the city and so we traded. And I've gone from having the loudest and hardest to miss vehicle in town to the easiest to walk past vehicle because how many white trucks are there? White F-150s. The challenge of this trade was that shortly after we made this trade, I found some rust on the truck. We had to get it looked at, see if it made sense uh, to repair that rust. Rusting right underneath where the, the doors close, that bar that the, the doors attach to. And I, we were told it's going to cost two to three grand to fix that truck. So my dad and I had this discussion. It's a nine year old truck, 129,000 miles. Is it worth doing body work on it? And so after discussing it, we, did, we agreed that yes, yes, we're going to double down on this truck. It's time to put some money into this truck because this truck is worth it. We double down on, down on this truck, we're not going to walk away from it. Took the truck over to Poly Eyes and Macon, got the work done, and um, picked up the truck last week and was driving it home. As I was driving it home, I was contemplating this question. I was pondering, like, when do you double down and when do you walk away? And it depends on the situation, right? It depends on what you're look, looking at. We're thinking about this truck, right? It's a matter of value. It, this is how much the truck is worth. This is how much the going to cost to repair. And you, you know as soon as you start doing a repair that repairs always cost more than you expect because the same way you cut into drywall, you cut into metal, you open it up, and, and there's always going to be more going on. And so that couple thousand dollars to repair it turned out to be quite a bit more, actually. Looks good now, though, right? And so there's that question of, like, if it's a straight-up value calculation, like, how much is it worth, how much to repair it, that, that's one thing. But sometimes when you're looking whether to double down on something or not, um, it's not a matter of just, like, a straight-line value. Sometimes it's a matter of, do you love it? Right? Do you love it? And there's a vehicle out there that I would fix no matter how much it cost. There's a 1980 Trans Am that sits in Walter Service Garage over in Macon, Missouri. It's a white Trans Am. And uh, it's the vehicle that Olivia and I drove away from our wedding reception in. And that is a, it's just an amazing car. My father-in-law is the original owner, 1980 Trans Am, original tires, original wheels, original everything. And uh, if it came down to it and we had to repair that, it would just be a matter of what does it take, not how much does it cost? If you will forgive the comparison, let me ask, contemplate ourselves. How, how much body work do we need, right? How much body work do we need? Our, all of us need something, right? If, if we're going to think of our, our lives in that fashion, all of us have a little bit of rust. Maybe we look better, some look worse, I don't know. But this is a question of like, in the same way that we think about when we're looking at repairing vehicles, what's the worth, right? Is it worth repairing, or is it a vehicle that we love and we're going to repair no matter what? Looking at 
what we're celebrating this evening. We are celebrating that the Word becomes flesh. We're celebrating that the Son of God came to live amongst humanity. The, 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 the colloquial way of translating that is that uh, uh, God moved into the neighborhood, moved in to be amongst us and with us, fully divine, fully human. And, and this is an amazing statement of how God sees us. Because it tells us two things. It tells us, first, that we need it. Right? It tells us that we need the body work. All of us. Right? Because God has already given the Ten Commandments. That didn't work. God has already sent the kings. That didn't work. God has already sent the prophets. That wasn't enough. Now, we need it. And God's going to do something about it. And so God shows up himself. Right? So there, this tells us first that there really is a problem. We really do need the body work. right? And second, it tells us how God, something about how God sees us. That God loves us so much that God would do this. God would come to be amongst us. That God is going to double down on getting this car repaired. God's going to make sure that this body work gets taken care of. We're not trucks. We're Trans Ams, if you follow, follow along how at least I think of vehicles, right? Trucks you use, and then they're done. But that Trans Am, I will love that vehicle the rest of my life. In the same way, that's how God sees us. God's going to do whatever it takes for us. And so that's why we're celebrating, we're remembering that God came to be amongst us. And so I want you to know tonight that you're the Trans Am. Right? God will do whatever it takes for you to be able to be healed, for you to be able to be made whole, for you to be able to follow Jesus in this life and into the life to come, into the kingdom that is to come. That all begins with the birth of Jesus who we celebrate, whose birth we celebrate this evening. Thanks be to God. We need the work, but God's going to double down on us. God already has. Amen. We read in John that in him was the light, and the darkness did not overcome. I hope that at some point on Christmas Eve, after night falls, you can light a candle, take a moment, and read some of the Gospels. Read some John, and the way that Jesus gets involved in people's lives. Read some Paul, maybe, and the way that Paul explains to people that there is nothing that can get in the way of what Jesus is doing with and for them. Read at the end of Revelation, Revelation 21 and 22, and read about the way that the kingdom is coming. We're heading towards a time when there will be the leaves for the healing of the nations pull, plucked from the trees by the sides, either side of the river of life, in the Garden of Eden, surrounded by the New Jerusalem. I hope you can take a moment to read a little bit, to think through some of what is made possible because of the birth of this child who we celebrate this evening. May the light of Jesus Christ guide you through this life and into the life to come. May the peace of Jesus Christ sustain you this day and always. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.